First things first, get yourself a little bit of garlic and you want to mince that up and do the same thing with some parsley. Okay, cool. Next up, I stole one lemon from my neighbor's tree. I zested it the outside because we're going to use that later. And for the actual lemon, we are going to squeeze the juices into the bowl because bitch, we are going to be in hard times. We cannot let anything go to waste, okay? Get yourself some pasta and cook it accordingly to the package instructions. Once the noodles are finished, we're going to take it out and now it's time to get to work. Big ass pan, medium heat, boom, multiple cubes of butter. Throw in your garlic and saute it until it smells... <laughs> Good. And then we're gonna add some peeled and deveined shrimp, all right? I left the tail on because it looks cool like that. Anywho, we're gonna season with some pepper, lemon zest, always parsley, lemon juice, and some crushed red peppers. Let's go, baby. Give it a good mix. Toss in your pasta. Mix it one more time. And we are gonna taste it, all right? This is where you wanna adjust for salt. And that's pretty much it. This cooking shit is easy. Plate it and top it off with some parsley. Day five of quarantine. I know you miss Olive Garden. Ah, <sighs> me too. But guess what? This is pretty close. Bro, look at this apron that a viewer sent me. This shit cute. Anywho, in a bowl, we're gonna get ourselves some flour, along with a pinch of baking powder and baking soda. To be honest with you, I don't even know what the hell this does. I thought baking soda was to make your fridge smell good. Anywho, let that vibe on the side while we work on our wet ingredients, okay? Throw in just a little bit of butter, melt it just a bit, add in some brown and white sugar. It was at this point where I was like, damn, this shit is kind of unhealthy. Throw a chicken egg in there and add some vanilla extract and mix it until you get something that resembles peanut butter. Combine the two bowls that we just made and boom, that's our cookie dough let's go now we're gonna throw in some chocolate chunks you can use chocolate chips too but they kind of creep me out because they're a little bit too perfect we're gonna take our cookie dough and roll it into a golf ball size and transfer it onto a baking tray and we're gonna bake these at 375 degrees for 8 to 10 minutes i was hella hungry so i just made myself a quick little snack while i waited take them out and transfer onto a plate and there you go this cooking shit is easy boom well done cookie this cookie right here is like a medium medium rare if you're stuck at home with nothing to do you might as well make some cookies quarantine and bake ahaha First things first, get yourself a rotisserie chicken. I think I got mine for like $4 at Walmart. You might want to check that out. Anyways, we're going to use our fingers to tear apart the chicken into shreds like so. And really quickly, we're going to cut up a little bit of cilantro. This is optional though, because I feel like cilantro has like no flavor at all. Okay, in a bigger bowl, we're going to throw in some of our chicken. Add your buffalo sauce and some ranch. I know some of you guys are going to be like, Ugh. just trust the process, okay? One entire bag of Mexican four blend cheese in. And lastly, add your salt, pepper, and cilantro that we just cut up. Give it a mix until it looks some Something like this boom and just let that vibe on the side get yourself a pan medium heat throw some oil in there add your 10 inch flour tortilla throw in your chicken mixture on one half and then fold it over press it down with a spatula and you want to cook on each side for about two minutes now mine might look a little bit burnt but damn is it raining that hard oh my god do you guys hear that shit huh add some parsley and yeah that's pretty much it this cooking shit is easy just a quick little snack that i wanted to make it's been one week of quarantine and i gained like three pounds from eating what the fuck what else is there to do First things first, we're gonna get ourselves some clean Rousseau potatoes, and we're literally just gonna bake them in the oven at 350 degrees for one hour. Now, since we have a long time to wait, we're gonna cook ourselves some bacon. Now that I think about it, I could've just microwaved this. Anyways, cut them up into little pieces, and now we're gonna focus on our filling, which is pretty much just sour cream, milk, a little bit of butter, smoked it, cheddar cheese, salt, pepper, and some green onion. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Once your potatoes are done, let them vibe out for a little bit because they're hella hot. Cut them in half, and we're gonna scoop our potato guts out into our Bowl. I'm pretty sure I burnt off all my fingerprints, but that's okay because at least the government can't track me now. Uh -huh. Mix everything in the bowl until it's nice and smooth and taste a bit of it to see if you like it. If you do like it, we're gonna put our potato mixture back into our potato skins. Give it top, I mean top it off with some more cheese and bacon and bake it for another 15 minutes or until the cheese melts. Ooh, the love of my life. Parsley. And that's pretty much it. This cooking shit is what? Easy. Uh -huh. Your store might be out of toilet paper, but I bet you they still have potatoes. According to today's menu, we're making pizookis. A little bit of melted butter into a big ass bowl, along with some brown sugar, one large egg, and a little bit of vanilla extract in. Give that a mix until it looks something like peanut butter. Honestly, I could just stop right here and just eat this batter, but we're gonna add some flour, then add a little nye of salt and baking soda, and combine everything together until it's smooth. Um, what? We're just gonna go ahead and ignore that clip. Once you have something that looks like this, it's time to incorporate our chocolate. And in a mini cast iron skillet that I got at Bath Bed. 
Why is that so hard for me to say? Bed, bath, and beyond. There you go. Throw your dough in. And we're gonna bake it in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes. See? Do you guys see my issue with chocolate chips? They're way too perfect and circular. That shit is weird. Top the cookie off with some vanilla ice cream. And since I'm an overachiever, I added some chocolate syrup and some dolce de leche. This baking shit is easy. You got a hot cookie and some cold ice cream. Amazing. I know all the dentists watching this right now are like, Heart been broke so many times, I don't know what to believe. First things first, we're gonna start off with a Korean pair. What's the difference between this pair and an American pair? This one has a universal healthcare system. We're gonna grate half of it into a bowl and then add some soy sauce, brown sugar according to your taste, sesame oil, and some garlic that we're gonna press because it's faster than mincing it. Along with that, we're also gonna throw in some ginger. And lastly, some gochujang, which is a Korean spicy paste, but it's not that spicy though. Mix that up and just let it vibe on the side. And now we're gonna work on our meat. Yeah! This is just some ribeye that I froze for an hour so that it's easier to cut. And we're gonna cut them into thin slices like they usually are at korean barbecue spots all we have to do now is marinate it throw it in the refrigerator and come back after a few hours the longer you wait the more flavor it will have but if you're hungry just make it right now it's not a big deal a little bit of oil in a pan medium high heat and just cook it like you would cook anything else for me i like that charred meat taste so i burnt it on purpose and yeah add some parsley and that's pretty much it. This cooking shit is what? Easy. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that there's no better feeling than having meat in your mouth. Wait, pause. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is make our marinade, which is really just balsamic vinegar, honey, a little bit of brown sugar, delicious light soy sauce, and to make it more healthy, we're gonna add some garlic and ginger. Yes, ginger. Today we're using motherfucking roots. Mix that up, and we're gonna get ourselves some chicken drumsticks. Buy your chicken at Walmart because it's cheap. Are they injected with steroids? I mean, probably, but we're not gonna complain. Let the chicken vibe with the marinade for at least four hours. <sighs> <laughs> Once you're hungry, throw the chicken onto a baking rack And we're gonna bake these in the oven at 400 degrees for about an hour Do not throw away the marinade, okay? We're gonna boil our marinade for at least 15 minutes to get rid of the salmonella And we're just gonna brush it on our chicken every 15 minutes Listen, 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 I know what you're thinking This is way too much work I mean, you have a point, but trust me I will always love you Come on Top it off with some sesame seeds And some parsley And yeah, that's pretty much it I will say though, I would recommend you marinate this chicken for at least 24 hours up until like five minutes before the chicken expires First things first, get yourself some stale bread. Take it very hard. hard. That th this bread is very hard. hard. Anyways, we're gonna cut off the crust, and this is strictly for the aesthetic. These are gonna end up in a shitload of sugar anyways, so they're gonna taste exactly the same. Cut them into sticks and let them vibe on the side. And in a separate bowl, we're gonna combine some egg, almond milk, or whatever milk you have. Anything but soy milk, because that shit tastes like some toes. A pinch of salt and vanilla extract. Give that a mix until it's combined. And now we're gonna make our cinnamon sugar. Basically, white sugar and cinnamon at a ratio of eight to one, aka the ratio of guys to girls at every frat party ever okay in a pan on medium heat we're gonna melt some butter lightly coat your breadsticks in the mixture and throw it in the pan make sure you don't soak it though or else it will come out limp and we're gonna cook it on each side until it's golden brown like this throw it straight into the sugar mix it up a little bit and that's pretty much it let's go throw it onto a plate serve it with some syrup and yeah next time you have some stale bread laying around what are you gonna do go feed some birds hell no all birds do is poop on your car and chirp whenever you're trying to sleep go ahead and make this instead chef's kiss Mwah. On today's menu, we're making garlic knots. Get yourself a can of biscuit dough and we're gonna cut each individual piece in half. Roll those bad boys out until they're about five inches long, which also happens to be the length of a fallopian tube. Anyways, we're gonna have to tie these into knots. Just imagine like you're tying your shoes, you know? Repeat the steps until you don't have any more dough. Let that just vibe on the side while we work on our topping. A little bit of unsalted melted butter, table salt, Italian seasoning. We have some parsley in there, garlic powder, and some fresh Parmesan cheese. Do not use pre-grated cheese because they just don't melt. I think it has something to do with the preservatives. Anyways, we're gonna take a brush and brush the butter onto our knots. And you should get something that looks like this. Whoa, kind of like dumplings. Throw them into the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. Take them out. And yeah, not gonna lie, these came out the oven kind of ugly. Anyways, we're just gonna plate them. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, I'm not one to biscuit shame, but the biscuits at Red Lobster... Eh. But these though, this one's just built different, man. Just truly spectacular. And these fit perfectly in your mouth.
On today's menu, we're making banana bread. Get yourself some really ripe bananas. The darker the banana, the sweeter the juice. Wait, mash them really good with the fork, and then we're gonna add some eggs and cannoli oil. Give that a mix and just let it vibe on the side, and now we're gonna work on our dry ingredients. The usual suspects, flour and sugar, baking soda, and a little bit of salt. And today, we have a special ingredient. Yeah, psych. But no, seriously, we're using vanilla jello pudding. I have never- Shut the fuck up, I'm recording! Damn! <sighs> Moving on, combine the two bowls and gently fold them together okay do not over mix no i love chocolate so i'm gonna throw some in there no seriously like feel free to add anything you want i've seen people add coconut wana any kind of nut take your banana bread mixture and pour it into a bread tray and bake it at 325 degrees for about one hour once you can poke it with a toothpick and it comes out clean we are pretty much done this baking shit is easy the bread came out more moist than me after sitting on a barber chair for one hour you know and that's pretty moist <laughs> add some ice cream on top if you're feeling crazy First off, get yourself some de-veined and de-shell jumbo shrimp and let that vibe on the side while we make our Cajun seasoning, which is pretty much onion powder, paprika, oregano, garlic powder, salt, cayenne pepper, red pepper, black pepper. <sighs> Or you can just buy Cajun seasoning at the store, save yourself some time, you know? Anyways, we're gonna use half of the seasoning on our shrimp, and the other half, we're gonna save for our rice, which we're gonna wash because there could be all different types of debris and insect poop in there. Uh. Once you have your rice, your seasoning, your shrimp, we're gonna throw some butter into a pan on medium heat and simply cook our shrimp for about two minutes on each side or until it's opaque all the way through. Once we're finished with that, we're gonna saute some garlic and butter. Once our garlic is a little bit brown, we're gonna add in our seasoning and our rice and a little bit of chicken broth which is crazy to me because I always make my rice with water, but this sounds like a good idea. Cover with the lid and let it simmer for about 15 minutes or maybe even longer if you want crispy rice. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Throw your shrimp on top, a little bit of parsley, just a simple, easy, quick recipe. And it's actually really healthy too. Just ignore all the butter that we use. On today's menu, we're making lumpias. We're gonna start off with ground chicken, green onion, and some garlic. Dude, look at this big ass carrot. We're gonna grate that and throw it in, as well as some water chestnuts, mint. Now this is really just there for the texture, you know, it's a little bit crunchy. Moving on, we're gonna season it with a little bit of pepper, salt, and soy sauce. Give that a mix until you get a concoction that looks like this. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to wrap. And there's a lot of different techniques of how to approach this. You can cut the wrappers into triangles, and then roll it like a typical egg roll, and then seal it off with some egg white pros and cons it is very beautiful but it is time consuming i would honestly just recommend you roll it like a carpet and cut it in half okay either way you roll it your back is going to start hurting how am i 21 years old with back issues huh anyways we're gonna fry these in some hot oil until they're golden brown and you're gonna want to do this in batches okay do not just plop the whole plate of lumpias inside once you're done plate it add a little bit of parsley and yeah that's pretty much it serve it with some sweet and sour sauce or banana ketchup but i would rather eat a jean jacket before i eat ketchup on today's menu, we're making snickerdoodle cookies, my favorite. Mix together some flour, baking soda, and salt, as well as some cream of tartare, which I've never used before. Isn't tartare the sauce that you eat with calamari, right? Anyways, in another bowl, we're gonna work on our wet ingredients. Okay, some melted butter and sugar that we're gonna mix. Honestly, you can just stop right here and eat this with some bread. But no, add one egg and some vanilla extract. Give that a good mix, and now we're just gonna combine the two bowls together. And do it very slowly until you get a nice dough like this one. All right, very nice very buoyant and before baking we're gonna let this vibe in the fridge for 30 minutes minimum all right once you're ready though come back and roll your dough into the size of a golf ball and dunk them into a cinnamon sugar mix no chocolate nothing extra all right this is very basic bake in the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes and there you go you know that's pretty much it finish off with some parsley jk jk i saw a girl tweet out that she can't date guys that eat dessert because that's a female thing to do you're telling me as a man i'm not even allowed to eat one cookie come on